Hello, this is Marvin Glotfelty. I'm a hydrogeologist and well driller from Arizona here with another industry connected video from the National Groundwater Association. Today I want to talk about the uh, properties of steel casing. Um, these days the prices are going very high and very important always. Uh, now, of course, for large, for smaller wells or for some specialty wells, we may use fiberglass or PVC casing. But uh, today I want to talk about steel. I have a few uh, videos, so I'm going to share my screen here. This slide is one that was from my McElhaney lecture I did back in the year um, 2012. So this is of 10 year old data, but it gives us a perspective. And at that time, I looked at three types of steel and you see three different wells here that are identical. They're all 1200 feet deep. They're all 18 inches in diameter. And uh, the only difference between them is the type of steel that the screen is made out of. So we have low carbon steel on the left. We have high strength, low alloy steel in the middle and we have stainless steel on the right. You can see the cost differences are substantial. Ten years ago, the well on the left would have costed a little over $500,000 and the one on the right would have costed um, $776,000. So about a quarter million dollars more just because you have a different steel type. And if any of you have seen that McElhaney lecture, you'll know that even though it costed more on the day of construction, by the end of the life cycle of that well, there was actually a savings of over $3 million because of that stainless steel. That's because of its corrosion resistance and because stainless steel has more resistance to the growth of biofilm and scale on its surface. So that's a couple of attributes that are helpful to know, important to consider. But what I want to do today is shift off of this a little bit and talk about other attributes, not just well screen, but the blank part. Now, in these examples, all three of the upper casings, the blank upper casings, are low carbon steel. But let's consider these three different steel types just in general. What are their properties? Why would we select one over the other? Because there is no answer for all wells. There's different type, times where we have different interests, um, different considerations and so on and so forth. So we would select different materials, not just on price, but on what we need for the well that we're trying to build. So let's first look at collapse strength. Of course, we may uh, put cement in the annulus behind or other heavy fluids in the annulus behind a well casing and it, and it can exceed its collapse strength. So we have to consider the strength of the well, how, how much it would take to collapse it. To determine that, we have a thing called the Timoshenko formula, and that's what you see here. So it looks like some big ugly map, but actually we can break it down and it's pretty straightforward. So we have all these variables here that you see defined, and uh, let's look at them in groups. The first three are really standard components. So we have the theoretical collapse strength, uh, that's shown here. That comes from really a lot of these other variables in a separate formula. But this is for a perfectly round tube. If we have a, have a tube that is perfectly round and doesn't oval at all, doesn't get uh, elliptical at all, that's what this would be. And of course, in the real world, that doesn't much happen, but it's something for us to consider. And then we have Young's modulus. Uh, that's typically 30 million for any type of steel. So we're using this for all three of our types of steel we're considering. The low carbon steel, the high strength low alloy, and the stainless steel. Same with Poisson's ratio, typically 0.3. And so we use that for all of them. So these are standard components. These are, you see these variables up in here and they're all, they're all throughout. Uh, you're not seeing this Poisson's ratio, but that was in the uh, determination of the theoretical collapse strength. So the next three are particular to the well that we want to design. So we want a certain diameter. Of course, when you change the diameter, you go larger, it becomes rapidly, really exponentially, um, less, uh, less collapse strength. The, the collapse strength goes down quickly 
and we see this in this ratio. So this diameter over the wall thickness. So this ratio we have here, we have here, we have here, many places. And so if you change this, it's not one place, not two, but three. And you know, so there's a big impact. And of course, that's not a surprise. So you larger diameters are more fragile. We have to increase the wall thickness to accommodate this ratio. And then the third thing is what type of steel? That's the yield strength. The yield strength for low carbon steel or mild steel is about 35,000 PSI. It's less for stainless steel. So even though stainless steel is more corrosion resistant, it's not as structurally strong. And high strength, low alloy is uh, stronger than the other two types. So we have different options depending on the collapse strength we need. And we can look at the different types of steel to consider those. So we're looking at corrosion resistance, we're looking at cost, we're looking at strength. And so these things all need to be considered together and, 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 and depending on what we're trying to do, we'll weigh them independently and collectively. So the last couple of variables here really are some assumptions we make and our answer to our calculation. So the ellipticity, how out around are we? We generally assume 1%. That's just to be kind of, that's a safety factor. So our, our casing, despite the best efforts of suppliers, they, they will build for us pretty uh, round casing, but it might be slightly out around. So we'll assume 1%. That means that we're going to assume that it's less strong than what this top value would have told us. And then the collapse strength that we calculate. So there's a number of variables that are embedded within here that's appropriate for us to consider and talk about. The first one is this ellipticity, this E value here. So we see the E value times three in the middle, and it's embedded in some of these other variables here. So let's look at an example. If we have a 16 inch diameter casing and it's 0.375 inch wall, that's three eighths of an inch, and it's low carbon steel, so that means that our yield strength is 35,000 here. Well, if it's perfectly round and has 0% ellipticity, but we compare that with say 5%, we, got, we, we get a little bit egg, a little bit out around, so up to 5%. What's the result? Well, the result is we drop from 911 PSI all the way down to 189. That's a big jump there. So there's a big impact. And even if we went from 0% to 1%, uh, I think it would be several hundred PSI drop. And so there's calculators on a lot of suppliers' websites. There's um, formulas you can get online. So this formula looks big and ugly, but actually um, there's, it's easy to uh, either develop or obtain or access spreadsheets or calculators online that can answer this for you, and then you can know what you're dealing with. So if you think you may have a differential pressure applied, even for a moment in time to the casing, you've got to consider this as, you, as you, to make it a constructible well. And then what about older wells? Here's the XY caliper log. This is the kind of log where instead of the caliper log having three arms that open together and just tell you the diameter of a borehole, in this case, there's four arms and two of them in one direction, the X direction, that's shown by the blue plot here, and two independent ones in the Y direction. And they're at 90 degrees to the X direction, of course. And so this is an actual old well. What we see is very smooth lines that suddenly becomes jagged, and that's because it's a mill snipe well. And so when it bumps into the mill snipe cuts, you know, we have these little jigs and jags. But generally, this line notice is pretty straight in the X direction. This one pretty straight in the Y direction, and their values are the same. All the way till you get down into this area, we see a little bit of sinuosity. It's waving left and right. And so if we look closely at that, what we see here is that the X direction becomes a little larger at this depth. And at the same depth, the Y direction becomes a little smaller. Then the opposite happens. The X direction becomes a lower value. And at the same depth, the Y direction becomes a larger value. What this tells us is that now this otherwise pretty round casing has gotten out of round in one orientation and then a, a few feet down 
got out around the other orientation. So this is going to be the weak spots. We look at logs like this when we're going to install a liner in an old existing well so that we can know whether our liner will fit. But also, this is a good method for assessing the structural integrity of a well. Now, these logs aren't are commonly run in you know completed wells, not in casing that's on the ground, but we can measure the ellipticity, which is to say out of roundness of casing while it's on the ground. And so we want to assess this and be sure that we have a good idea of how round our casing is, because as you saw from the Timoshenko formula, it makes a difference. It causes the, the, the casing to become rapidly and extensively weaker. So another variability is the yield strength. That's to say the type of steel. Do we select mild steel? Do we select stainless steel or do we select high strength flow alloy from a structural integrity standpoint? Well, let's look at the same example down here. We've got our 16 inch diameter casing with our 0.375 inch wall thickness. We're going to assume 1% ellipticity. That's this value here, this assumption. So what's what's the difference if we just plug in our three different materials? Well, there's a, there's a 470 PSI if it's low carbon, 429, a little weaker if it's stainless steel, even though it's more structure, uh, chemically uh, inert, it's structurally weaker and much stronger if it's high strength low alloy. The thing to keep in mind though, is these are as reported for um, by suppliers. There, there may be slight changes within the, the, the uh, the standards and might be meet all AWWA standards and ASTM standards and other standards, but still have variability, slight variability in the chemistry. So these are kind of approximate numbers. That's the way I think of them. They're not precise. So you would never want to push up against the limits of any of these and just keep that in mind. Another uh, thing to consider is the weight. So we have uh, we have a, a drilling rig of a certain mass capacity <clears throat> and we want to be sure that our string weight does not push the limits of that so there's a simple way to calculate this and of course you can get this from suppliers as well what is the weight the pounds per linear foot if you don't have that readily available all you have to do is say the outside diameter minus the wall thickness that value times the wall thickness times a variable k if it's mild steel, you plug in 10.68. If it's stainless steel, you plug in 10.93, and that'll tell you the pounds per foot. So if we have our same example casing, we'll see that for low carbon steel, it's a little less weight. It's 62.58 pounds per linear foot, and it's a little heavier if it's stainless steel. So these are the things that we have to keep in mind. and. Uh, I will unshare my screen here. And I'm back. And I wanted to mention one other thing to you. In my book, I made a note that I thought was useful, so I wanted to read it to you. It's not like it's story time here, but I just read you a quick excerpt. Because the wall thickness, remember we talked about how, how important the wall thickness is. And I say in here that, um, it is important to note that ASTM standards A53, A139, A312, and A778, that covers mild steel, some types of HSLA, and stainless steel. Well, they all state that the minimum wall thickness of the casing can be up to 12.5% less than the specified thickness. That means that the wall thickness that you call for may not be what you actually get on site. So. We've talked in previous times of, of how you would go out to the side and measure that wall thickness with a caliper, with a gauge. And so you can do that and you should do that every time before you install that wall. Don't just assume that you met a, a national standard and therefore you're okay. It could be a little bit off and being a little bit off on wall thickness can be a big impact to the, the characteristic of the steel. And so this is important to keep in mind the, the type of steel, the purpose of the well, and they need to match. And so let's uh, let's just uh, be diligent in doing this so we can put in good wells to provide groundwater to the world. <laughs> Thank you, and I'll talk to you next time.